Hey you guys, so the new year is right around the corner and I don't know about you guys, but I always find myself cleaning out closets, trying to get organized every year when it gets close to the new year. So I thought I would do a project that would help me do that. So this is actually a vintage file box. I love these because you put them on your shelf and they look like books, but then when you open them, they actually have like alphabetical filing. And it's like a giant um, binder and you can store things in here. So my plan is to put like my receipts and stuff in here. Y'all pray for me that I actually do that. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Roy Cycle with Treasures. Let's get started. So for today's project, I have the file box and we've been using pieces of this paper. So um, we've already used like more than half of this sheet, but I have these two dress forms um, that are still on this sheet. So I want to use them to do the front and the back of this. And there is another sheet of paper that just recently came out from Recycled Treasures. And this is a junk journal project block. And this one has multiples on here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, different project blocks. And then what I call like a washi tape, right? These are just strips of pattern that you can use on various products, projects. But I'm gonna be using um, this script paper and I'm gonna use that to use on the spine of my book. And I'm using this because I want to be able to write on the spine so that I know what's in there. And this is going to be a really nice background that's pretty, but it's still going to be light enough that I can write over it so that I know exactly what's in my file box. Because otherwise, like, what's the use of having it, right? So I'm just going to trim this off. You guys, I am dying to find a project to use. Uh, my eye chart on. I just, I love that one. Love it. Soon. I will find something soon. But I'm going to trim this block off of here and then I will put the rest of my sheet up to use on another day. Now I have my paper all chosen, but you guys know before I can decoupage, I'm going to have to paint this, right? So let me finish cutting out my paper and I'm gonna have to find something to use these two beautiful ladies on. Maybe something for Valentine's Day, right? So I still have these two and I'll save those for another day. So I'm gonna set these aside and get my box I'm using Wise Owl's Restoration because I don't have any antique via on my table right now. Um, this is a little warm, but it's still bright enough that it'll do the job. So each of my sheets is a little longer than the front. So I'm thinking that I'll use the bottom of this sheet to wrap around to cover the bottom of this side. And I will use the top of this sheet to wrap around and cover the top. So. That's the plan, but now which sheet? I think I'm gonna use the black one on the front. What do you guys think? I vote yes. And I'm not worried about the spine here because I know that I'm gonna be using this sheet to cover the spine. And I may use a piece of trim um, to go down there. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to. So this top part opens. And so there's like um, a seam here. And so I'm going to put the paper on this side of the seam and then leave that open so that it can move freely. And the back doesn't have a seam, so we won't have to worry about it there. And so I'm thinking that that's where I'm going to want to put it. I'm going to go ahead and decoupage as if it's one whole piece. And then I'll go back later and cut the opening um, after I've decoupaged it and it's dried. 
Now, I know you guys are used to seeing me use Saran Wrap to smooth out my decoupage, but today I'm actually using a felt-covered um, spatula. Um, these are so awesome, you guys. We used them in our decoupage boot camp that we had back in October, and you can find them, like, really inexpensively on Amazon. I believe it's, like, two bucks a piece, um, and you get, like, four or six at a time. And so I'm using this the same way that I would use um, the Saran Wrap, and the, um theory is the same because you have the felt it slides across the paper a lot easier although if you get product on your felt it won't slide as easily um, so just be mindful of that I just love this paper it looks black on camera, but it really is like more of a variegated color. There are some greens and there's some browns and there's really warm tones um, mixed in. It's not just black. And I am using Wiseau's One Hour Enamel to decoupage with today because that's what's on my workbench. And um, you guys know I love the One Hour Enamel. Is that I may even put some transfers over the top of this and I know that my one hour enamel plays really well with my transfers and the one hour enamel is like 90% cured in only four hours so if I decide to go back over my paint I don't have to worry about um, the moisture reactivating and bubbling up my paper. I'm really working around um, this is the place where the lid lifts up and I want to make sure it's really defined so that when I go back to trim it um, I won't have to question where to cut like a natural um, space right here to trim the paper um, that's gonna look really good so I'm just gonna trim it there and see here on the bottom what's happening because I'm wrapping it around it wants to double over so I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this triangle off right here because I'm not gonna need the, all that paper I just need to have one side or the other so um, I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's see what side I want, though. This one has more cool stuff on it. I think I want this side. So um, I am going to go ahead and trim this right here. And then... I'll trim it right here. And I'm going to wait to trim this off just to make sure that I've trimmed it correctly. Now I'm doing a quick decoupage today, you guys. So if um, you feel like you need more like detailed instructions on decoupage, um, be sure and check out, I have a couple of videos in this list. Um, just really detailed, simple videos about decoupage. Make sure I'm putting this on the right way, y'all. This box is going to be so awesome when well, I'm done. I have this little leather pull right here, which is really cool, but I don't know if it's cool enough for me to bother with working around it. I haven't decided. Because I could probably get away with just making a small slit right here and then pulling it through, right? Let's see. Yep. 
you guys are working with me, working through this with me. That's what's the thing about upcycling, right? Is that um, you kind of have to problem solve. So I have this leather um, pull right here and that you could use this to like pull it off the shelf just in case it's packed tightly, right? But um, I don't want to get rid of it. So I think I'm just going to trim around the top of it. And just, well, I guess I'm gonna have to pull it large and make it large enough to pull that through, huh? So I'm literally gonna cut around that. I don't wanna cut it completely out though. Just enough so I can pull this through and then I can decoupage this underneath that paper so I can keep that and I can go back later and do something around that um, if that where I trimmed this too visible but I think I did pretty good what do you guys think I vote yes so it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult but I think we can do it um, let me put this blade away before I slice my elbow open we don't want to do that I found those um, X-Acto knives at a thrift store. Super cool buy. Um, they are really sharp and there are no safety measures on them like they are with the newfangled ones with the tops and things. So same as always you guys laying the product down. I want to make sure I have enough product. I don't want to have any spots where there's not any product. I'm going to make sure I get a lot under that tab right there. Um, so it's not just about making sure you have some product, but you want to have enough that your paper tacks down really well. And sometimes when you're working with chalk paint, um, it sucks up some of your product, right? So you may have to go over your surface uh, more than one time in order to get adequate coverage. So I'm going to carefully flip this over. I think I can start right here on my edge smoothing that down and then pull that tab through and finish smoothing and I can just come in later and trim any excess paper off here that's there can I tell you guys a secret so when I'm here working with you guys I'm like talking through my process but I talk to myself when I'm in my shop by myself too y'all Nobody listens better than I do. <laughs> now, on the bottom, you guys remember where I trimmed it? Now I'm looking, um, and maybe it's best to go this way. I have three options, right? I can either use this piece, or I can use this piece. Or I can use this piece. I'm really going to use whichever one is going to give me the most coverage. I may have over trimmed just a little bit. So I'm going to cut that one um, and leave myself a little paper here. And I think that I will be fine there. So let's not do that just yet. Let's do this side first. You guys see how I have to go through things? I have to, I have to think my way through it. I have to kind of feel my way through projects. I don't know all the answers right away or when I start. I just figure it out as I go. Now this little flap here, I'm, probably, I'm gonna try to trim that. We're gonna see what happens because I don't want that to flap over. But I think that turned out really good. So, this side is dry enough now. I think I can lay it down. Maybe not. Let me hit that with my dryer um, before. Well, I guess I laid it down already, didn't I? I just want to make sure that this doesn't stick to my table. But I think I'm okay. So that we can put on this piece. This is a little more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Can I just be honest about that? It's going to be fabulous. But it's kind of complicated, right? 
and I'm rubbing this across my surface, but I'm still being super gentle, you guys. It's wet tissue paper, so you can't handle it too much. But having the felt on the end of this does give me um, more leeway to be able to work my paper. Now I have this little area here on my spine, but remember those pieces that I trimmed off of the other side? Um, I'll just use them on this side. Yeah, definitely this one. You guys know what I want to do on this one? Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to make me a fake wax seal on here. Like, I think it's a must. I think I got to do it. I'm going to have to order me some um, red hot glue so that I can make it because I want it to be red. And I actually have a seal maker with my logo on there. So I think I will use that. I have a little bit of overlap here, but the paper is, um, it's tissue paper, it's thin. So you can't even tell that there's any overlap there because the background color of the paper is the same. Okay, I think that, let's dry some portions of the paper so that I can make some trims um, in some of the areas. That I need to trim. Um, and when we come back, we'll work on the front of our box. So for this project, it's kind of weird because I'm working on multiple planes. Um, and so now that everything is dry, I'm going to go around and trim the things that I wanted to trim. So I have a little bit here I wanted to trim and I want to trim um, these and then we can move forward and decoupage this front part. So if you guys like the tutorials here on the Recycle Treasures um, YouTube channel, be sure and subscribe. If you hit the bell, you'll actually get an alert when you upload a new video and we upload new videos about weekly at least weekly and if you're curious about recycled decoupage paper you can find a retailer near you at recycled.com so um i've trimmed off the places i want to trim you guys i am so happy <laughs> i am so happy with this project i'm glad i'm making it for myself because i love it but i digress so i'm going to trim the piece and you have the places here. Remember, we made sure that we could see them really clearly when we were decoupaging earlier. So now I'm going to take my razor and I'm actually going to lay it down flat this way. Um, and I'm going to use the edge of this as a guide so that I can cut it um, where it needs to be cut versus cutting it straight down and hoping um, that I cut it in the right place. And let's see, <gasps> did we trim it right? Yes, yes we did. It opens fine. So I'm gonna go back and just double check my edges, make sure everything is laying down the way that it's supposed to. And you guys will notice when I open it, you can see, I'm gonna decoupage that. You can see what was there before, but I think I'm gonna go in with some, with some of the Wise Owl heavy metal paints in um, bronze. I think that's gonna be fabulous in there to have a little blue of bronze right there so that's the plan but i'm going to go through and just double check all my edges and make sure everything is take tacked down um and then i will decoupage the front of my box okay you guys so i'm gonna have to like break into my stash a little bit one of my other designs that i have that kind of goes with the series that we're using for this book is a larger version of the dress form um, but it also has these on one side. So I'm thinking that I'm just going to steal this so that I can decoupage it on the front of my, um, of my booklet. And so I'm just going to steal a tiny piece off of here. I don't want to waste too much um, because I want to save this for another project. So I'm going to trim it right there. Um... I believe that's 
still going to leave enough paper for um, my Valentine project that I want to work on. So I am thinking that we just take a posh piece and then we trim around everything. Of course, I have to trim around that lock now, right? So we have this gorgeous um, brass lock here that I will not be repainting. I'll use a little toothpick and clean any paint off that's on here. But let's trim around that though. Kind of the same way we did it around the, the tag. We're going to kind of do the same thing we did on the other one. I'm not going to trim it all the way. I'm going to trim it just enough to be able to wrap around. Because And the reason why I do that, you guys, is because I want to leave myself some leeway so that if I need to make adjustments once I start decoupaging, that I have the option of doing that. And then I can make any final cuts after instead of like overcutting and then having an area around the piece that shows. where we're at so it's a lot easier to trim when your pieces of paper are actually tacked down uh, because then you don't have to guess where to trim you can see exactly where you need to trim so I'm gonna let this dry and then I will trim around that piece and so we'll let that dry but in the meantime we can start sealing our box and so um, I'm just taking the one iron enamel and just doing a nice liberal coat over the entire box and this is going to protect my decoupage paper and this box will be good to go for years to come. She's so pretty! Now I'm being really careful because I don't want my paper to get stuck to the areas that I'm sealing because I'm going to go back and trim that once it dries. And just like that, you guys, we took her from drab to fab. I am so happy with this project. I may have to make another one. I just really love this. So we started out with an old vintage filing box and we've updated it using nothing but decoupage. Although I may put some ferns on the front. I haven't decided yet. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. Remember, if you like our tutorials to subscribe, we do upload new videos every week. If you'd like to get alerted when we do upload a new video, just hit the bell. Thank you so much. You guys can find all the supplies I use here today at RoyCycled.com. You guys remember, there isn't anything here that I've done today that you cannot do. You guys can do this and you can do it today. Have a good night.